All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Marshburn, and the channel is Papa D Rides. Um, it's all about motorcycle riding, long distance touring on motorcycles, and I'm still developing what the channel is going to be all about. But um, if you've been following my channel, you know that I just recently, this past weekend, completed an Iron Butt Challenge. Uh, I rode down to Savannah, Georgia, and rode an Iron Butt Challenge with Wood Jr. and nine other strangers to me, so there was 10 of us total uh, that did this ride. Um, I did 1,157 miles total, and the Iron Butt Challenge Saddle Sore is 1,000 plus in less than 24 hours. So um, in reflecting on that, I wanna give you some suggestions for me on how to complete an Iron Butt Challenge successfully. I'll put a link to the one we did this past weekend right up here, um, but let's get right into it. So. Um, so my first thing is planning and preparation. Um, part of the planning process should be to check out your bike thoroughly. And a good way to do that is use the T-Clocks method of checking out your bike. So you want to check out T-Clocks stands for tires, the controls. So check all your hand and your foot controls. Make sure that your clutch is working right, your brakes are working well. Um, all the levers are in good shape. There's nothing loose there. Um, and so controls and levers, those are the two things that are there. Um, then the O is for oil or all your fluids. Check out your fluids, make sure they're good. Check your chassis out. Any additional things you put on there, such as foot pegs, highway pegs, um, anything that might loosen up when the bike's vibrating around, check those things, make sure they're tight and they're secure to the bike. Check your drive belt. Um, all of those things part of the chassis checkout. Just look your bike over thoroughly and then check your kickstand, especially on Harleys, the little jiffy stand springs are uh, prone to fail and that'll cause the, the kickstand to just kind of flop around and cause you to have a problem and you might lose that halfway uh, uh, down on your ride. One other thing I would suggest for Harley riders to check specifically is how tight the, um, the actuator is for your gear lever. Um, that spline shaft, it goes from where the lever attaches back into the bike. A lot of times it gets loose and over time those splines wear out and you'll go to shift and won't, nothing won't happen. Um, and then you'll have to fix that while you're on your uh, time constraint of the iron butt. So I would be careful with that. Um, so address any concerns you find in that T-clock method in advance. For yourself, um, I would suggest to take a couple of longer rides. And when I say longer rides, I mean 100 to 300 mile rides uh, to get your body accustomed to riding longer distances. If you've never ridden a long distance ride at all in your life, you need to get that knocked out of the way before you get out there and try to do one um, in this challenge. Uh, so while you're on that ride, and actually every time you fuel up, fuel up go ahead and practice getting receipts setting that down by your odometer, taking a picture of that receipt um, with your odometer. Um, I would suggest doing that. Now, the next part of the thing is planning your route. I would suggest you use Google Maps or some similar program that it will give you a better approximation of the mileage that you're gonna have for your route. So build that route here, and I'll show you one that I've got built here on the computer. Um, but what I'll tell you to do is build that route Stick to major highways and interstates if at all possible. Plan your fuel stops along that route. Um, and if possible, those fuel stations should be 24 hour stations. Larger truck stops are typically the best for that, especially if you're riding with more than a couple of people. And then plan your stops according to your fuel range. So my bike, I can typically get uh, 250 plus or minus miles to a tank. Um, I want to plan my fuel stops 190 to 220 miles in, so I have some reserve there in case I have an issue with getting to a fuel stop, and we can go. So let's look at the computer, and I'll show you this route that I built. So I'm planning to do an in-state iron butt. So that's an iron butt that you complete all inside of the same state. I'm going to do mine in North Carolina because that's where I live. And I planned my start point at the Love's Travel Center, which is about 15 miles east of where I live, really not even that far. Um, so if you look here at the screen, I'm planning on travel, starting this travel center and I live right over here in this area. So the Love's Travel Center I know is open 24 hours a day and I can get a receipt there 
um, and at the beginning and the end of my ride with no issue. So my plan is to go to the mountains of North Carolina. So I'm planning my route to go up through Gastonia here on Highway 74, hit Interstate 26 and take I-40. Right here is a TA travel center and I'm gonna make that my first fuel stop. By that point, I'll need to use the bathroom, get a fuel receipt, um, whatever I need to do, I can do there. And then I'm gonna go up here into Maggie Valley. And so that's a two lane road, kind of slow, but it's just a little area. Maggie Valley, make a loop and come back on I-40 and I'm gonna head east on Interstate 40. Right here in Marion is another truck stop um, and there's some other fuel stops I know along this way, but I know that's open 24 hours a day. So I can get a receipt there. By the time I get there, I'll need to stop and use the bathroom and I'm good to go. I'm continuing east. When I get up by Winston-Salem, I'm actually gonna drop down here to Interstate 85 and there's gonna be another fuel stop that I can do right here. Um, then I wanna head on east all the way out to this speedway that's right at the Virginia line and that's all interstate. And then I'm gonna take the, this two lane highway here across just below the Virginia line on 95 and head south um, toward Wilmington. There's a pilot travel center here that I can get fuel at. Then I'm headed right by Wilmington on the interstate. This highway 74 here, I travel it a lot. My mother lives in Wilmington. You can make good time on that road. Um, there's a fuel stop here I can take. And actually I know there's some 24 hour stations up through here. I use this fuel stop just to help me make my route. But there are 24 hour stations all along this route. I can stop and get a receipt um, and take a break if I need to. And pardon my dog, she's walking around here looking out. So hopefully she's not bothering us too much. Then I'm gonna come up here to highway 220 in Rockingham, and this turns into Interstate 74. And I want to take Interstate 74 up and up by High Point, all the way up to the Flying J, up by Mount Airy. So I'm back up the by the Virginia line again. And then once I get that, I want to head south on Interstate 77, do a loop around Charlotte, and come back in to the Love's Travel Center. That's my end state. So continuing on um, with I've got some notes here if I can get them open back up. All right, so that'll get your routes done. Um, and then the day before you go ride, make sure you get plenty of rest that day. Make sure you have a good meal the night before and go to bed early the night before. The actual day of the ride, have a plan to stay hydrated. Um, have extra bottles of water and snacks available to you. Keep them in your tour pack or somewhere on the bike if you can. I use a Camelback um, to help me um, stay hydrated while I'm riding. Have you some snacks available um, so you can have those if you need to stop and take a break. Uh, try to make it to your planned stops. Each stop, make sure so you can stick to your timeline. Limit those fuel stops to 20 minutes or less if at all possible and incorporate your meals into those fuel stops. So we have a mute meal that stop can be a little bit longer, but you still don't want that stop to be over 40 minutes if you can at all help it. Um, have something to occupy your mind, audio books, music, something that keep you occupied while you're going down the road. That's a good thing to have. If you need to stretch in between your fuel stops, find a rest area, pull in there, use the rest area to take a stretch, use the bathroom, whatever, but limit those stops to five to 10 minutes and get right back on the road as quickly as possible and keep going. Um, have some pain medication with you and go ahead and take Tylenol ibuprofen the night before to get your therapeutic dose up. And then maintain that throughout your ride so you won't hurt quite as bad. Um, I use a tracker to help like Spot Walla um, with my ride. So that'll help if there's any issues with your receipts. Now when you're getting your receipts, be very careful with your receipts. Make certain that your odometer is reading your actual mileage and not your trip mileage or your um, range on the bike. I had an issue with that on my particular ride. Um, I accidentally set it to range, and so I didn't have the mileage, and that was actually my last stop, so I had to make sure that I included that with my ride application, what the issue was, and IBA looks at all those things in order to do it. I haven't got the paperwork back yet, but I got an official email that said it was certified and it's coming. So I'm good with that. 
Um, and this is very, very important, okay? If you're on this long ride and you get extremely tired, you need to stop, take a nap. You got 24 hours, so if you take an hour nap or two hour nap, most of the time it's gonna take you 16 to 18 hours to ride the iron butt. So let's say it's 18 hours and you take an hour, an hour and a half, two hour nap, you've still got two hours to play with when you get up to get to where you need to go. If you're extremely, extremely tired, find a hotel. Check into that hotel, get you four or five hours worth of sleep. And if you want to, you can add another 500 miles onto your ride and get the butt burner 1500. But better to come home safely and try to do this challenge at another point than to push yourself beyond your limitations and uh, be unsafe. So please, please do that. And most importantly, have fun. Um, and then I've got some uh, thoughts about riding with a group. We rode with 10 people this, this past weekend. So um, riding with a group can be challenging, um, but it's also a lot of fun. So I will tell you that the Iron Butt is probably gonna be best completed either solo or with one to four motorcyclists that have ridden together before, know each other's riding styles, are compatible with each other, and really knows each other's strengths and weaknesses and they really can look after each other very well. Because you, you've ridden with that person before, you know if they're riding differently than they normally ride. And that might be a clue that they're getting fatigued and maybe you need to pull over and check on them or at least call them on the headset or give a hand signal, hey, are you okay? Check on each other while you're doing that. Um, have a solid way to, to communicate with each other. So whether that's headsets or hand signals, have those things worked out in advance and communicate with each other frequently throughout the ride. Um, like I said, we proved this past weekend it can be done with a larger group that are complete strangers. I didn't know any of these guys before we rode. Now we're friends. Um, but it makes it a lot more difficult to maintain your timeline. And also, when you're in those larger groups, people may feel pressure to continue on the ride when they really need to stop. Um, and so make sure that you go over that stuff up front that, hey man, there's no pressure here. If you need to stop, you need to stop. Um, be willing, if you're on that larger group, to sacrifice your own ride if you need to, to hang out with somebody else that might need that break. Um, but we want everybody to come home safely. The Iron Bud is to be fun, to be enjoyed. It's a challenge, but we want to do it safely. And then uh, the last thing I want to say is, I had a blast doing it with these guys again, and I would ride with them 100% again. Uh, but it is a challenge to do it with 10 people. Preferably, I'm going to stick to two to four riders in the future, um, and I'm going to plan my routes out so that I am getting back with a minimal number of miles. You know, this weekend, we, we did our iron butt. It was complete. I still had 140 miles to ride to get back to my hotel because I wasn't leaving from my home. So the one I'm doing here in North Carolina, I'm leaving from my home and coming back to my home. So when I'm done, I'm going to be 10, 15 miles from the house. Boom, I'm right in my bed. I don't have to ride another 140 miles to get home. Now I got more miles out of this, but I still uh, would rather have been at my hotel when I got to 1,000 miles as opposed to being 140 miles away from my hotel when I got to my 1,000 miles. Um, that also being said, um, this weekend, the whole purpose for me going down was to ride this IBA with Wood Jr. Then I was gonna practice with Robert Simmons. So. I did the ride and I got up the next morning and went over to practice with Robert Simmons and I'm going to put down what happened with that in the video here. That's the ride video today. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys later. All right guys, I'm in Pooler, Georgia, I'm getting ready to go practice with Robert Simmons. Man. I don't know what I was thinking. I did this ride yesterday, the Iron Butt, with Wood Jr. who handled it with like 10 people. And uh, it took longer than uh, I even thought it would even having that many folks. So uh, we all kind of split off toward the end there and went our own way. Some people went on home. But me and Wood Jr. wound up riding the last couple hundred miles together. Um, and uh, we got, we rolled in here last night a little bit after three o'clock. We left here at four, so I got up yesterday morning at three, went to bed this morning at three, so I was pretty much up for 24 hours. And then uh, I've had about four hours worth of sleep, a good shower, 
I've got me an espresso drink and some uh, egg bites for Starbucks. I sent Robert a email because I was going to be late this morning just to let her know. So I guess I'm going to be fashionably late. Plus, the weather doesn't look like it's great. He may actually not be having practice, but I couldn't find that out uh, easily anyways. So I'm going to go over here and check. And then I got 300 miles to ride to get home, and it's going to be raining probably uh, most of the way home. So I've got the rain gear, and I'll put everything on <laughs> that I need to have on today uh, to make it home uh, dry as I possibly can and uh, hopefully safely. But I'm looking forward to practicing over here. Um, I don't know if I'll actually make a video of the practice. I'm gonna video myself, but, uh, and I'll, I'll put some excerpts in there, but I'm not gonna like make the whole practice. You need to go watch Robert Simmons. Um, he's a great guy, and he really is making an impact on motorcycle safety, slow speed skills, and how to do it. And I know the first thing he's gonna ask me when I get over here, um, after I get parked, probably if he's still interviewing folks, um, is how do I rate myself to slow speed maneuvers? Well, I rate myself probably a 3.5, maybe a four. I used to be more confident until I changed the bars and the seat on this motorcycle. And that changed everything. And so now I'm having to relearn and I feel real wonky when I'm doing U-turns. I do okay going slow, moving left and right um, in a comfort zone, and I, I, I've never done it on the, with the cones up, so, um, and I've messed around a little bit, turning left and right, and I play around going straight lines all the time as slow as I can. I really can't track stand this bike like I could my bicycle, but I try <laughs> for just a second to track stand it anyhow. And then um, the other thing that I do, I have gone to a parking lot and tried to do a couple of U-turns, but I really haven't done that often. I've done it maybe once. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see how this goes today. Yeah, like, I don't know that I'd be comfortable doing a U-turn in this road right here without putting my feet down. So, or going off in the grass. Well, I'm fashionably late. Let's see if he's actually out here this morning or not. Did to go all the way to the back, so I've still got further to go, looks like. <laughs> I've seen all this in videos. Good morning. Hey guys, these guys are practicing behind me. You have to know your limitations, man. I'm just toast. Um, I did two of the exercises. I got here late and missed the first two exercises. I did exercise three and the first part of exercise four. And uh, I'm just exhausted. Mentally, I think I'm here, but physically, I just wasn't up to the task today. So I want to bow out and come back and practice with Robert again. But man, you need to check out Robert Simmons' channel. He does a great job. These practice sessions are free if you're a VIP preloader, which is five bucks a month, man. So $60 a year, and you pay two, three, four hundred dollars to take this same course, and you can come practice here as often as you want to throughout the year um, if you're a VIP preloader. And he puts these practice sessions online every week. You can watch them, you can practice at home before you come down here, which I've done a little bit of, but not as much as I should. So check out his channel. 
headed home from Savannah and this is I-95. So I'm going to get off and reroute. I was hoping maybe to take the interstate and get on home, but it's raining. People are crazy out here. And so I'm going to go to secondary roads. I'll get home almost as fast and I'd rather get home safe than be out there in that. And that's just, man, that's just hard right now. All right, catch y'all later. Now this is more like it. Going through the trees with the Spanish balls up above me and not having to do with 18 wheelers and all kinds of traffic. A lot less stressful. Got to ride in the rain, might as well enjoy it the best you can. All right, man, I'm ready to get home. I'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Hey guys, I'm gonna say it one more time in this video. If you're headed to Daytona and you wanna not have to deal with I-95 and I-26 in South Carolina, which are horrible, find you a route that cuts off between Columbia. If you come from I-77, points north like Charlotte, uh, find you a route that cuts from Columbia to Savannah. Uh, there's several different ones. 321 is probably the best option, but you can actually take 321 and I think it's 119 the same way I went down to Savannah uh, and made almost the same amount of time. I think it's probably 30 minutes longer according to Google, but you got to think of the traffic and like what I was just in a minute ago, you're probably going to make the same amount of time. And you come out right there at Savannah Harley-Davidson and then I-95 is three and four lanes headed into Florida. Um, and much more navigable um, but you know it's through South Carolina it is two lanes and it's nasty and look at this road that I'm on this is highway 278 out of Ridgeland that's a big old dog is y'all stay right there boys all right sorry got distracted by the dogs uh, this is highway 278 out of Ridgeland and I'm taking it back up to 321 uh, because the interstate was just so backed up and with the rain and people doing the stuff. I saw a guy over the ditch with a trooper there. Um, I just want to be safe getting home. Guys, if you decide to take 321 or an alternate route so you can miss the interstates headed down to Daytona, just be aware, you can make great time through here, but these little towns, um, when they have a speed limit posted, uh, you need to slow down when you're going through there. And that's really about the only place that you're going to see traffic is when you're going through these little towns like this. But, you know, the speed limit through here is 30. And actually on my way down the other day, I saw somebody pulled over in this little town. So you'll come along, you'll crest the hill, and the speed limit will go from 55. They'll have a sign that says 45 and then 35. And there's a couple places you come across the hill and it just turns to 35. So watch out for that. But, you know, once you get out of the little towns, you can go back up. And, you know, I feel safe going five to seven, eight miles an hour over the speed limit riding these roads without having any issue. Now, disclaimer, you might get a ticket like that, but I typically ride, once I'm outside of the little towns, about eight miles an hour over the speed limit, plus or minus a little bit right there. And uh, I think you'll be fine. Like I said, I chose this today because I didn't want to deal with the traffic on the interstate with all the rain and stuff. But really, it's probably a best choice any time that I'm headed down that way. And you know, I, I always think, hey man, I'll just wait and take the interstate. And then I get on the interstate like I did today. And I, I realize, no, actually that's a mistake. I should have stuck to my normal plan and rode this back road. Because I had to backtrack about 15 miles to get over here so I could get back on this road from the interstate. But that's okay. I enjoyed the road that I used to get over here. Have fun in Daytona, guys. I wish I was going, but I got obligations at the house. So, for what it's worth, my suggestion, if you're going to Daytona, whether you're pulling a trailer or you're riding, get off on one of these secondary roads and stay off that interstate. This is what the traffic is like. And it may be a little bit more during bike week, but this is pretty much what it's like uh, on these back roads down here in the low country of South Carolina. And you get to ride through the trees with the Spanish moss hanging over your head. Man, it's just a way to go. All right, enough said. 
uh, I appreciate you guys riding along. We appreciate this kind of content. If you like the kind of content, click subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and hit the notification bell, and I'll talk to you guys later on.